Hi Sunshines, today we're learning about the causes of the Great Depression. First, let's define what we mean by Great Depression. This was the worst economic crisis in United States history and it lasted throughout all of the 1930s. It was characterized by really high unemployment, meaning it was really hard for people to get work and provide for themselves. On Wednesday, we learned that the stock market crash of 1929 was the event that triggered the Great Depression to begin. But this wouldn't be enough by itself to cause a depression that lasted for 10 years. There were other underlying economic problems going on throughout the 1920s, including inequality, overproduction, and easy credit. In this respect, the 1920s were a lot like the Gilded Age of the late 1800s. Superficially, it looked like a golden age, but below the surface, there were serious problems. You'll learn more about these problems in the Schoology quiz after this video, but for now, I want to give you more context about the economic boom of the 1920s. The technological achievement that fueled economic growth in the 1920s was the assembly line, invented by Henry Ford in 1909. The assembly line was a way to make products much faster and cheaper and in huge quantities, which is called mass production. Sometimes historians call this the second industrial revolution because it revolutionized our economy. Of all the automobiles that have ever been designed and built in the world, there's one that stands out as most significant above them all, and that's the Model T Ford. The Model T introduced mass production and single-handedly brought us from a horse and buggy level of technology to one where we had machines that were run by gasoline engines. Using a moving assembly line, Henry Ford was able to build these things in about one-tenth the time it took to build uh, other vehicles by hand previous to the Model T. The Model T's were simple, they were rugged, they were cheap, and as Henry Ford used to say, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. When they were first introduced in 1909, they sold for $950, which doesn't sound like much to us today. Back then, that was quite a lot of money. Henry Ford cleverly paid his employees $5 a day, which back then was a huge amount of money compared to other jobs that they could get. He also reduced their work day from 9 to 8 hours, but again by doing that, he could have three production shifts working and hence build cars around the clock. Going somewhere in a car was probably 10 times faster than going by horse or buggy, which is what they were accustomed to before. Back then cities were just developing and most of the roads were terrible, especially the country roads. And so the Model T had to be built in such a way where it could handle anything all the way from no road to city roads. And it actually did a very good job of that. Most of the country roads were mud roads or dirt roads. And in the city there were no snow plows. If it flooded you had to ford it. And so you just had to deal with all the stuff. And the Model T was miraculous at being able to handle almost any road condition you could imagine. Henry Ford did not invent the first car. The first car was invented by Mercedes-Benz in the 1880s. But because they were handcrafted by master craftsmen, they were so expensive that only the very wealthy could afford them. Ford made the first affordable car by inventing the assembly line. The first Model T sold for $950 in 1909, but that cost came down dramatically as Ford made the assembly line even more efficient. The assembly line was soon used to mass produce all kinds of new consumer goods. Record players, refrigerators, radios, toys. That's my grandma riding a tricycle around the year 1928. And this was the start of a lot of the modern brands we recognize today. Basically, the world was becoming modern in the 1920s. The 1920s were also the start of mass culture, meaning it was possible for millions of Americans to listen to the same song recording or watch the same movie or go to the same amusement park. Luna Park opened in Coney Island in the 1920s.
Okay, now that we've seen the fun stuff, you're going to have to go back into the red folder and do the Schoology quiz to learn about the bad stuff going on in the 1920s economy. When you're done, make sure you complete the exit ticket, which is sharing a drawing of what caused the Great Depression. If you can't get the drawing to work, you can always write a paragraph instead. Okay, right now I'm going to show you how to upload a picture of your drawing to the Schoology discussion if you're doing it from your computer. So I'm going to reply to my question and then use this button that says File. My picture is right here on my desktop. And now I'm going to type a little reply. And there it is. Here's what it looks like to upload a picture from your phone. Go into the discussion, click attach, take a picture. Now before you can actually send your picture, you have to type a little bit of text into the comments. There we go.